Hi, and welcome to lesson eight of our phases of matter unit. Here we're gonna deal with another gas law, which is Graham's law of effusion and diffusion. Graham's law states that the rate at which a gas effuses is inversely proportional to the square root of the mass of its particles, which probably sounds a little complex. Let's go in and take a little bit more in-depth look at it. The first thing that I really wanna get clear on is this difference between effusion and diffusion. So here are two different pictures. The first picture shows us diffusion, which is defined as the bulk movement of particles through space. The second picture is showing us effusion, which is single file movement of particles through a tiny hole. This is a different, <clears throat> there's clearly a difference between these two terms. And if you wanna commit it to memory, that's fine. But for our purposes, you don't really ever need to worry about the difference. The math is still going to work the same way. Let's take a moment and think about how this works. Lighter particles are going to effuse or diffuse more rapidly than heavier particles. That's because they're going to move more quickly at any particular temperature through the space that they occupy. Effusion or diffusion is then going to continue until equal particle concentrations are reached throughout the entirety of our space. And considering some real world examples, Graham's law explains why if you get a wonderful pizza delivered to your house, it doesn't take that long before you can smell the aroma molecules from that pizza all throughout the area that that pizza is occupying. Of course, Graham's law also explains why if the dude sitting next to you in class uses a little bit too much Axe body spray, you start to smell that pretty quickly as well. So pluses and minuses, I suppose. Mathematically, Graham's law is expressed on your honors reference tables as follows. For any gas at a constant temperature, the rate of effusion of the first gas divided by the rate of effusion of the second gas, so in other words, the ratio between those rates, is equal to the square root of the mass of gas two divided by the square root of the mass of gas one. Currently, you don't actually have the ability to figure out the masses of gases. You can if you wanna jump ahead to that particular video, but I don't actually recommend it. I'll give you the masses of different gases if you need them. The other thing that you can do is you can use the density of the different gases, which is given to you on reference table S, or again, given to you in the problems that we'll be looking at. Let's look at a couple of Graham's law problems right now to see how they work. This problem is on page 11 of your unit three packet. A closed container of a mixture of chlorine, fluorine, neon, and helium gases is opened so that the gases can escape. Place the gases in order of increasing rate of effusion. Take a moment and see if you can solve this problem on your own. And then when you're ready, let's go through the solution together. The first thing that we're going to do is figure out what substances we're talking about. I've just written them down over here. The next thing that I wanna do is get their densities, which I can get off of reference table S. All of these substances exist as gases at the temperature at which reference table S values were established. Looking at the densities of each of the substances, we can see that the density of chlorine is 0 0.002898 grams per milliliter. The density of fluorine is 0 0.001553 grams per milliliter. Neon is 0 0.000825 grams per milliliter. And helium is 0 0.000164 grams per milliliter. Remember that since reference table S is at the same temperature point for every substance, each of these gases density is only dependent upon their mass, with the more massive gases being the most dense. That being the case, these gases are actually already in order of increasing rate of effusion. Chlorine will take the longest because it is the most massive, and helium will take the shortest period of time because it is the least massive. You're probably somewhat familiar with this from balloons. Helium balloons lose their helium over a period of days or weeks. And the reason for that is because the helium atoms are small enough to effuse through the very, very tiny atomic scale openings in the material that makes up the balloon. Let's try another example that looks at the math that underlies Graham's law. This is actually not in our packet. So a closed container of a mixture of neon and helium gas is at a temperature of 298 degrees Kelvin. The rate of effusion of helium will be approximately how many times the rate of effusion of neon. Take a moment, pause the video and see if you can solve this problem. And then when you're ready, let's go through the solution. So Graham's law tells us that the ratio of the rate of helium's effusion compared to the ratio of the rate of neon's effusion is going to be equal to the square roots of their masses. I don't have their masses, but I do have their densities. And as we just discussed, I can use those values in their place. So the rate of helium divided by the rate of neon is going to be equal to the square root of the density of neon divided by the square root of the density of helium. Let's go ahead and take the square roots of those values in order to figure out that it's going to be equal to approximately 0 0.0287 divided by 0 0.0128. Doing that math, we get a value of 2.24, which tells us that we should expect that helium will effuse at a rate that's 2.24 times as fast as neon will in a particular situation. If you have any questions about how this problem was done, take a moment and write them down before we wrap up. 
Thanks so much for watching this video on Graham's Law of Effusion. Please take a moment and make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure explain Graham's Law at both the macro and atomic levels. And finally, make sure that you can use Graham's Law to solve effusion and diffusion problems if they're given to you. If you can do those two things, you're doing great. If not, write down any questions that you have. You can always get in touch with me by leaving a comment below the video or through the contact information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.